Hello, Paul here. Today we're going to talk about a fridge alarm which comprises of basically a monostable and some logic circuits with a couple of transistors. We're going to start by showing you the circuit as it functions and then I'll go through the theory of the circuit and then show you how to build it on breadboard. Okay. So here we have the basic circuit. We have a reed switch here and a magnet and the reed switch is used to trigger the 555 timer there which is configured as a monostable. The reed switch at the moment is currently closed so the monostable is constantly re-triggered by this transistor here and the green light indicates that it's being re-triggered i.e. its output is constantly on. The monostable as you probably know the time period for the monostable is set by the resistor there and this capacitor and this one's set up for about 40 seconds but by adjusting the capacitor or the resistor you can make that time period either longer or shorter. The output the 555 timer and the state of the read switch is set, sent to some logic over here and it's the logic that decides when the buzzer comes on. So what happens is, I'm going to take away the magnet and you'll see that the green LED stays on for about 40 seconds and then after 40 seconds the red LED comes on and the buzz will sound. And then to re-trigger the alarm, simply as soon as the magnet comes back into contact or near to the reed switch, you can see that the alarm goes off. And uh, as I said, very useful, very easy to make. And the theory is probably about medium, intermediate, something like that. So I'm going to try something a little bit different in terms of explaining how the circuit works. The first thing to note here is that we have a 555 timer and that's configured as a monostable. Classic monostable is to have 7 and 6 tied together and 7 and 6 are then connected to the junction of a resistor and capacitor. The resistor is connected to power, the capacitor to ground and the value of these multiplied together will give the time period of the circuit. This monostable is configured as being re-triggerable. It basically means that whenever J1, the switch J1 is closed, the voltage at J1 is zero. There's zero volts here. And the 555 timer is triggered, triggered from zero volts there into the trigger pin here. However, because we have zero volts here, the PMP transistor is biased on, it's switched on, and it keeps the capacitor in a state of constant discharge. So effectively, the voltage at pins six and seven can never reach a state where the 555 timer can switch off all the time that it's triggered. So in our configuration, the way this is set up, when J1 it's closed here, the 555 timer is always on. The signal across J1 is sent here to a NOR gate and the NOR gate has both of its input pins tied together. Now a NOR gate with both inputs, input pins tied together is essentially a NOT gate. So if we have zero volts here and zero volts here, we can have an output of one here. That'll be an output of one, a logic one. 
And that logic 1 goes to another NOR gate here. And because it's a logic 1, the output of the NOR gate must be off, must always be off. So all the time this switch here, J1, is closed, this output is off. So all the time our fridge door is closed, this output is off. What then happens when we open J1, the voltage at this point here rises to the supply voltage, which is 5 volts, and this transistor switches off and stops discharging R2 and C1. Under this condition, the monostable charges, C1 begins to charge, until it reaches two-thirds of the supply voltage. It takes, in this configuration, with these two, these two components here, about 40 seconds for that to happen. When that happens, and all the time that happens, the output here, R4, into R4, is at logic 1. So, this logic gate stays off. Because J1 is now open and we have 5 volts at this point, this NOT gate switches off, its output goes to zero. When the 555 timer reaches the end of its time state, its on state, it switches off. We have zero on this input, we have zero on this input, and this gate switches on. You'll see, we've already seen the red LED comes on. It biases this ZTX689B MPN transistor, switches it on, and we have current that flows through a buzzer down to ground, as you heard. Both of these diodes are protection diodes, and they help to stabilize the circuit. You'll find if you try and build this circuit without these diodes, you'll have uh, quite a few issues. And at the top here, we finally have the two decoupling capacitors this one you can't see. But that's effectively how the circuit works. So going through a build on breadboard, the first thing we would have is a resistor. This is going to be our power rail at the top. We have a resistor. It joins on the same track as a reed switch. That's the reed switch there. And this joins down to the ground rail here. Now we have the 555 timer, which is there. And the 555 timer, we could put it anywhere, but we want it to be fairly close to our reed switch resistor combination. Here we have the logic gate, 74LS02, a NOR gate. A couple of things to mention, a couple of things I've done here. I've put a ground into the 555 timer there. We've done the ground for the logic gate and the power for the logic gate. And also from the schematic, we've got pin 4 connected to power there. And finally, not quite sure if you can see that, but 7 and 6 are joined together by a little link there. Quite important to note, quite often in logic, in schematics, there is no power and ground shown. And you have to be aware of that. That's why I'm highlighting it here. Next up, we have our resistor. This is our timing resistor for the monostable. And that joins into pin 7 here. And we have a capacitor, the timing capacitor, which joins on this track and goes down to ground there. At this point, we have our re-triggering transistor. It's a ZTX790A PMP transistor. The emitter of the transistor is joined to pin 6 of the 555 timer. And we've grounded the collector there. Now we take it a bit further, the triggering signal from the reed switch resistor combination is taken from its junction to pin 2, and pin 2 is also connected to the base of the PNP transistor by a 1K resistor there. Pin 2 is also connected to our logic gate. Pins 2 and 3 are connected here, and they are connected to pin 2 of the 555 timer by this lead here. This one is slightly blurred but we can see if we look closely pin 3, we come out of pin 3, we go through a complement resistor through the green LED down to ground there. At 
And once again, a stage further, here we see pin 3 is connected to pin 6 of the logic gate, as per the schematic. You can trace that if you want to. We also see that pin 1 of the logic gate here is connected to pin 5, and that's also shown on the schematic. Starting to get quite busy and crowded here, slightly more complicated, but we see that pin 4 of the logic gate is connected through a covenant limiting resistor there to the LED, LED down to ground. We will also note that the here this gap in the power and ground and here I put a little bridging wire across there because I'm going to need to use power and ground on this side as well to complete my circuit. This is starting to get quite tough to follow, I understand that, but we've got coming out of pin 4 of a logic gate, we go through a resistor here, and then we connect through a diode to the base of the ZTX689B there. I've also grounded the emitter of the ZTX689B here, and I've placed a little wire at the top here, and that's going to go to our buzzer from power there. This slide simply shows the diode that's going to connect from the cathode of the buzzer to the collector of the transistor and you should be able to see that for the buzzer I'm using you need one, two, three, four holes on the breadboard. Now you wouldn't be able to see that when the buzzer's in so that's the kind of spacing or gap that you're going to need. And this is the circuit with the buzzer in here. And last but not least, at the top we have our two decoupling capacitors, power supply decoupling capacitors. This one's 100 microfarads, this one's 100 nanofarads. It's a classic combination. And the only other thing you have to be aware of is we take a lead from the negative of both of them and take that down to the negative of our supply here. And that is basically all you need to do to build it on breadboard. It's just a case of following the schematic and, uh, and building it and having fun, making mistakes and all that type of thing. Hope this has helped. There will be a PCB version on its way, but uh, this should be enough information to get you started with the circuit for now. Bye-bye.